All right, welcome to the counter offer. We had a little technical difficulties, but we are here live from New York little, City. Little technical difficulties. A little technical difficulties. And we're going to be talking about two items that are real estate related in the news that he doesn't know I'm going to bring up. And he's going to bring up two that I don't know. And we're going to discuss them. We're going to decipher does the headline actually match the article? So mine's kind of easy because it's talking about the current market analysis that came out yesterday. Must be street easy. It must be street easy. That is our go-to for public information and listings. That was a cop-out. That was a cop-out. Let's hear what it has to say. Sorry, I like to bring what the people want. Unfortunately, they talk about luxury, luxury, luxury a lot. So the first thing is they have renewed demand for luxury homes is a redefining segment with the top 10 percent of all sales in july were above 4.5 million dollars 10 percent of all sales that happened in july were above 4.5 million dollars wow that's a lot low inventory in the luxury market is giving home shopper sh- home shoppers limited negotiating power as sellers retain the upper hand. This is luxury. This is luxury. (laughs) Manhattan continues to dominate the luxury market. The borough has 91% of all luxury contracts signed in July. I will add to that list, if I can, is- Please do. A lot of homes on the rental side are coming up because they can get their, say, $800,000 when buyers want to pay $700,000. So I know they talk about $4.5 million and above is very tight inventory. Anything below that, there is still limited inventory, but it's not moving at the rate that we thought. But to be honest, I think that's going to change because the rents right now are just out of control. You know, we, we, were, we were at one place where... Uh, it's going to go, and I talked to a tenant that's the uh, Rutherford. Oh, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had a client that went, and he goes, there was not even a second bedroom, and it's, I think, $7,000. Well, like you're... A, uh, it's crazy. You used to be able to say, I'll put it up for sale and for rent, see which one gets better traction, but nowadays you don't even have time to test the market for sale because the rental just... Uh, it goes. swoop in. Yep. All right. I've got a good article for you, Charles, one that you it. would be very interested in. I'm, at, I'm interested in all of your articles. A private equity firm might be your next landlord. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Investment firms are buying smaller buildings in the boroughs from families and small landlords. Some tenants are wary. Ooh. Tell us more, Mr. Bottomley. I would say that that's gone along with exactly what you've been talking about, is how the funds are swooping in to take advantage of distressed real estate, uh, sometimes not even distressed real estate, yep. and just uh, older regime that's ready to get out. Ironically enough, I had a phone call with someone. I brought it up uh, Friday. He was looking to sublet his apartment, but he talked about the new firm that he's at, and he said, private equity, raising on behalf of family funds so wealthy families and they go in and they buy up and they have nine thousand rental units well i also thought about that i mean you can obviously go really large with the blackstones no i I think that they're talking about here is the smaller apartments yeah uh, small apartment buildings of three units let's say even five units so something that is kind of sheltered from the tax increases that uh, come around with the rental prices going up. Also, you know, when you're thinking about it, most of these small landlords or families purchased way back when. Decades ago. Decades ago. Keep it in the family. The prices are so high, who is going to be able to just afford a three unit place for $5 million and another wealthy family sit there? Yeah. No, they pool their money together and give it to a fund. And that's what this article is talking about. It's smart. Talking about uh, investment in housing, let's go with uh, Warren Buffett. And he put in just under a billion dollar stake into home builders, three different home builders. So across the United States, it's very expensive labor, materials to build. So there's a shortage, blah, blah, blah. We're hearing that across the country in Florida, North or the Midwest and then out West. 
But uh, clearly, Warren Buffett does, you know, obviously his fund is $350 billion. So $1 billion out of $350 billion, it's not a lot. Is it a lot? I don't know. It's but not. Uh, it's not. <laughs> but it's still a big share of these U.S. Well, it home is for builders. those companies. Yeah, exactly. So he put it into D.R. Horton, which was $726 million. Uh, they made at the end of the second quarter, as well as 152,000 shares in Lenner and 11,000 shares in NVR. Um, it's very interesting because home builders have actually taken a hit. And as they were talking about in the Financial Times. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, are you a subscriber to the Financial Times? <laughs> shares of home building companies and that industry have rallied through this difficult year from 2022, which was higher interest rates crippled, crippled their demand. So they're essentially pushing through. And uh, I think they are gonna continue. There's still a lot of demand for new houses. And there's Well, that's really interesting to bounce off of my article because let's say you're an individual and you have a couple million dollars that you're looking to invest into real estate. Would you go like with the fund route of going with private equity and giving your money to a private equity firm? Or would you go the Warren Buffett uh, route and put it in these companies with him? If it was up to me, I would say you follow one of the best investors in history and go with Warren Buffett. And put it into the market? You would oh. go with Lenner over the direct product? I would go with the direct Well, if product. you get, let's put it this way. If you put it with the direct product, you're probably in it for the long haul, like the families who sold it to you. Yeah. So, but it's always a good debate. Uh, states LLC transparency bill could have a major impact on the real estate industry. That is a fact. A bill that aims to make it easier to determine the actual faces behind New York's limited liability companies been talking about has this for passed years. legislature, but it remains unclear whether Hockle will sign it. I don't think so. There's way too much money behind hiding the money. I doubt she will sign it. So it passed. Uh, passed the state legislature. Wow. Well, with my limited government experience, I don't know what that means. Me neither. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I do know that for years, you know what they've been trying to go like after this a... international money when, in fact, it's really good to just hide behind the LLC. The LLC is by a trust or another corporation or an S Corp. And How about this idea, Charles? It's all about taxes. It's all about the taxes. It's, it's all about taxes. <laughs> it's all about the liability of getting sued. How about this idea, Charles? Lay it on me. You pay more to put it in an LLC. There's a tax. But we have enough taxes. Well, you pay to play. You want to keep it private? Then you got to pay an extra tax. No, I don't know. One time tax. No. Right I want to go to LegalZoom.com and we get my LLC. That way we can uh, charge you more. I'm going to go under LL Bottomly Corp and put all of your real estate. Another 1% out of the uh, sales price. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, those are the uh, four this week. If you guys have any comments, please leave it in the uh, comment section below. In the meantime, please like, subscribe, follow, share, comment. Yeah. See you next week. Yes, exactly. And give us an article to talk we about. We might be close to 30 episodes on this. I think this is 30. Yeah, but, we've been getting yeah. a lot of good feedback about not looking at the camera, and uh, my mom has liked the news, so that's very nice. We have at least two viewers. All right, I'll have to send it to my mom. <laughs> <laughs> we got three. All right, guys, have a great week, and we'll speak to you uh, actually in two weeks. Next week, we're in Dallas. All right. And you forgot about that.